Hello everyone, Gaku here with another instance of the War Room. Before we get to the new treaties, let's talk about uh, some land transfers and the major moves from the last session. First off, Prussia and Austria lost in a devastating war against France and Russia. Prussia lost Rhineland, Austria lost East Galicia. Southern Serbia has been acquired by the Ottomans. Uh, Serbia itself is a satellite of Romania though. The states of uh, Bulgaria and uh, Dobruja have been transferred over to Romania. So Romania now has all of its eastern cores, basically just lacking the Austrian ones. Uh, Sardinia Piedmont has been expanding into Italy, and right now it's trying to uh, form Italy via red shirts, and uh, this might actually be against the rules, so we'll wait for Slazer opinion on this. But right now, uh, Modena, Luca, and Tuscany are all at 100% war exhaustion, so it's uh, anyone's guess whether that's actually allowed. Russia has been expanding down into Morocco, but is way behind on tech. Austria has taken most of Egypt, the important parts anyway. Portugal has been expanding into South Africa, but has traded some of its colonies to France. Also traded a colony to Austria here. Um, Persia obviously has been expanding in a major way. Russia has been pretty well unopposed and has taken northern Korea as well as uh, this portion of Manchuria, Japan has southern Korea. Uh, Netherlands lost Java to Austria in a devastating surprise turn of events. Uh, Johor is currently war with Japan, probably will be annexed shortly. And uh, UK not making any major moves in Asia as of yet. Australia I believe was an AI, so um, New Zealand is still free. and. Um, Let's see, in South America, Argentina has taken most of Chile, Brazil took Uruguay, and uh, most of Bolivia, also Paraguay, and Colombia took a couple of states off Venezuela. Canada and USA took four states off Mexico, those went to USA, Haiti went to Canada, and uh, UK took two states off of USA. So I have to talk about this war with the UK, and basically what went wrong. So the first problem was that uh, Brazil just put me in a really bad frame of mind. If you've ever played poker, essentially Brazil put me on tilt. So I was already pissed off and uh, just wanting to uh, do something about the situation rather than sit there. So uh, when UK had two stacks up here in the northeast, I moved three stacks up to intercept, but by the time they got there, a third British stack was there. The war with Mexico was not yet over. So ideally I should have probably just gone after Mexico and then moved my stacks up, but I didn't see both sides of the war. Now most most everyone else in the campaign who was watching both sides could see what UK was doing, could see what I was doing. I obviously couldn't see what the UK was doing. Basically I didn't know who else might be coming into this war, because UK could have called in any number of people, for example Spain, maybe France, Russia even, Japan, any number of people could have come into this war to add their own war goals and UK could have just sieged it for them. The idea was to uh, end the war quicker and basically hope for the best. So I sent my three stacks up and they got wrecked. Why did I engage with three? Well, I sent three up when he had two and by the time I got there there were three. There was every reason to expect that by the time these other three stacks got up here there might have been six or eight British stacks. So the idea was attack three with three, hope for the best. It didn't work out and uh, so that ended up being a loss. So um, it could have gone a lot worse than it did, but in the end, UK ended up with two states with half a million pops, which hurt, but it could have been a lot worse. He could have taken New York. Also, he got Canada in his sphere. But uh, in the process of getting this 24 infamy for two states and a sphere member, uh, what UK didn't do was protect South Africa against Portugal. He also didn't do anything in Asia that was worth mentioning, and he also um, didn't really do anything to help Japan of note. He also didn't do these sorts of traditional things you do as UK, which is, you know, expand into India, take Burma, Siam, that sort of thing. So UK is actually way behind for where he should be in the campaign right now. But that's how he wants to roleplay it, and I'm fine with that. Uh, we'll talk about the treaty that we signed here in a minute. First, I'm going to go back to the old world because I think things make a bit more sense over here. So Portugal and Spain have a non-aggression pact. This carried through from the first session, but according to the wording of the treaty, it only counted for the first session, so I don't know what's actually going to happen here. There is a potential for backstabbing, but uh, they might both decide to honor it. Basically, they have a nap, but by the wording of the nap, it's only for the first session. Here in Central Europe, Austria and Prussia 
have a defensive alliance and an offensive alliance. Uh, Prussia is probably going to be played by Chad, and as it stands right now, Prussia is way behind on tech. I don't think he's uh, actually invested in any culture tech, which is kind of a bad thing to do. Austria is a bit of a powerhouse, and it remains to be seen whose side uh, Vincinio is going to come down on, but uh, it's likely that with the current state of the world, he might come up down on Austria's side, but really he's kind of staying neutral right now, just trying to form Italy. There is a major coalition that's formed in the east. Russia and Sweden have offensive and defensive alliances. Russia and Ottomans have offensive defensive. Ottomans and Persia have offensive defensive and Russia and Persia have a defensive. Ottomans also have an offensive defensive with Romania. So basically there's this uh, coalition of five nations here. Now, as part of the peace agreement with UK, um, UK has formed a coalition of its former colonies, basically the uh, Commonwealth Treaty. And there are a number of terms here, and I'm just going to go over the basics. First off, UK, USA, Canada, and Australia slash New Zealand and South Africa all have a defensive alliance. South Africa obviously is an AI, but uh, basically we're protecting South Africa. We also have an agreement as far as uh, who's controlling what zones and areas. So UK basically has a uh, hegemony over its former colonies minus USA. USA has uh, hegemony over Mexico, basically Central and South America, and um, we're not going to interfere with each other's spheres or spherelings, that sort of thing. Also not going to attack each other's spherelings, etc. It's a pretty complex treaty, but basically we've got a big defensive alliance and we're just going to look out for each other. Now uh, USA and Canada, we also have an offensive and we have a defensive and offensive alliance. And our treaty from last time, which uh, covers Mexico, is still in effect. Although this time around, Canada is probably not going to be helping me in Mexico. There's no need for that. USA, Colombia, and Argentina have a defensive alliance. Colombia and Argentina also have an offensive. I'm going to be helping Colombia form Gran Colombia. And uh, once that happens, Panama is going to be transferred to the USA. And uh, Colombia should also get cores on USC at that point, so they should be able to get that area. Um, Brazil and USA have a defensive alliance. Uh, this is specifically lower priority than all other defensive alliances and maps. As part of this treaty, Brazil has to justify and acquire a state and impose it against Mexico. Once that state is acquired at the end of the session, that's going to be transferred to USA. And yeah, so that's about it. So there's a lot of uh, treaties and uh, there's also a rumored non-aggression pact, maybe a defensive alliance between UK and Russia, which would be kind of interesting. It's very likely that the uh, civil war will fire, but that probably will not last very long. Also, obviously taking some more states off Mexico, and um, we'll be able to do Manifest Destiny as soon as Romanticism finishes. So I'm predicting a fairly quiet session for the USA. Uh, most of the action is probably going to be here in Central Europe. And not sure what's going to happen between Russia and UK at this point. That's kind of up in the air. But with all the defensive alliances and sort of overlapping treaties, I think I'm going to be fairly safe in the USA. A lot of people have been talking to me about how I'm going to get my cores back. I'm not concerned with that. Really, it's only half a million pops, and I've got cores on it till the end of the game. So there's really there's no reason for me to go after the UK right now. And uh, actually, being allied with the UK is good for me because... We've got uh, bigger threats over in the Far East, if you know what I mean. So yeah, looking forward to a fairly peaceful session, but uh, we'll see what happens. Session starts 1 p.m. Eastern, runs for about four hours. One other thing I need to mention, I've got a secondary channel, Gakumarasura Stream, where I've been transferring my streams over from Twitch, so then I can download them, edit them, and whatnot. But uh, those transfers have been failing repeatedly lately. And uh, there's nothing I can do about that, so it's very likely that uh, there aren't going to be too many more videos posted to that channel. So I'll post what I can, but it doesn't look promising. I might end up just shutting that channel down if things continue to go the way they have been. Anyway, edited videos will be up probably starting Monday. So yeah, thanks for watching and have a good one.